Hi everyone, in this video we're going to compile a soft blazor application for desktop. To do that we will use Electron. Electron is a framework that helps us to create desktop applications, native desktop applications, um, by compiling our web application. So basically the idea is um, the Electron framework will self-contain everything that you might need for your application and it will run just as a desktop application. I think that you can even add some um, OS level access with Electron, but in this case we're going to do the most simple scenario which is init um, the framework and do the changes that we need in a soft blazor application. Here I have a soft blazor application. This is a basically a empty application. The only thing that I have here is a domain object, domain object one. The connection string in this case I set it here in the application level. So I'm using an in-memory um, connection string. So no database involved. And then I did a few changes. First I set up the new edge package. So here I have, if you see the installed ones, well everything that is SAF and Blazor and this one, Electron.net API. Well Electron.net API. So you need to set up this at least in the server, in this project. After you do that, you have to come to the startup and in the startup you have to add this line. This uh, solution you can find it in my GitHub repository. I will put the the link to the to the repository in the description of the video. Okay, so you just need this line, and let's see what else do you need. I think it was only that. Yes, at least in here. Then you go to the program and here you need to add one more change. In here, in the web builder, you have to put use electron and pass the args. And that's it. So two lines, this one and this one. Okay, after you do that, you have the electron reference on your SAF project. Then you need to run some console commands. Okay, this is the line. So basically you need first to install the global tools for Electron. So this is this line here. I will put it also well somewhere in the in the repository or in the description of the video. Okay, so when you do that you will install the Electron CLI tools. So after you have that, I, I will run this, but it will show like I already have them. So see, I already installed. So after you do that, um, basically you just need to do something that is uh, one command, which is this one. And I cannot paste it. One second. Okay. So you have to do init, but I mean, electronize in it. I don't know if I can do this bigger. Well, anyway. So, but you don't have to run it yet. So you need to make sure of something. For example, see here, see the path. I'm not in this directory where this project lives. So basically I need to go there. To do that, I mean, let's open the folders. Let's get the path. And let's change the directory there. Okay. Then let's do clear. And now we're in the directory where this project lives. So now what we need to do is, I mean, we can run the command. So it's not this one. The command is the init command. So it's electronizing it. Okay, it says that I already have the um, the config file done. So it's because this uh, solution I already run it and tested. So, but let me show you what this 
I mean, this will change your uh, configuration a little bit. So let me show you what happened. Okay, so if you go to the uh, the Blazor uh, application project, and then to the properties, and then the launch settings, now you have a new profile, Electron profile. So here you have an option to run as Electron, but it's supposed that when you do that, you will see the window like a desktop window, but for me it doesn't work. Let me show you. It shows that it's running, but it never opens the window. Let's see. Okay, so it put the console in the other side. Here we have it. I think in this case it's just running the application and forwarding the communication. Because here is where it stops. So I think it's already running. If I go to that IP and that port, I should see the application. But in most of the tutorials that you will find in the internet, here basically you will see the desktop application. But it doesn't happen like that. But anyway, it doesn't matter. So uh, that's the only change that that command uh, do. It changed your start. OK, we know that we can run it uh, like in electrode mode, but we cannot see anything at the moment. And we know that it's initialized, so we can build it. To build it is basically this command. Is well, it's electronized. Build target, and then you have to say the OS. In this case, we're going to say Win. So right now it's building an installer for a Windows desktop application. Also, there is something that you should know that to to make everything work correctly, you need to make sure that you have Node running, Node.js. Um, I didn't have it, so I have to set it up for each um, computer that I was using. So you make sure you do that before the start. And I did include that in the video because it was going to be too long. So now what we have is a, a desktop installer. See? Just like a normal desktop application. And I think it doesn't prompt for basically any parameters. I think that there is a way to set, set up everything that you want to uh, include or the icon and the stuff like that, but I just did the most basic setup. So after you do that, it will install the application and your application will be running in a Windows like this. So this window is basically a desktop window. See, file, edit. I think you can also edit these menus, but in here it's running self-contained um, because this window includes the browser, the server, and all the process that is running. So it basically is a desktop application at the moment. So, okay, uh, let's see. Here I have it. So I will close this, and well, now you know how you compile. You compile it for for Windows. So let's do Mac OS. Okay, so. Here I'm connected to my Mac that is about to die, basically no battery, but the process is exactly the same. Basically, uh, let me close all of this. So the process is the same. In this case, I have uh, I mean, I'm running Visual Studio for Mac. Where is it? It's here. So here I have exactly the same application. Um, in this case, I didn't have to do the init or anything because I did it already one time and it, that was in the source controller. So basically here I just downloaded the application and the commands that I execute in the console, in the terminal in Mac here, 
are exactly the same that I did in Windows. So basically, is I'm going to open a notepad to show to put them on screen. Basically, is these two commands. So you will have to run those two commands in each platform that you will, I mean, that you compile. So after you have the the um, the source and then you have elect electron running also again is the same is um, you will see the command here is or maybe you don't you won't <laughs> because the output is huge so the command is basically um this one is the same electronized build target and in this case is mac os and what you will end up with is you go to the bin folder the same as as we did in the dot in the windows application and you will have this this is the executable here i have I already have it running so let's open this See, it's a native window. Everything self-contained. The framework, um, the application. Uh, actually, also the browser is that's not Safari. It's Chromium. And well, I think I will have to move to another OS because this computer is about to die. So I'm going to disconnect from here. And okay, it's time for Linux. So. Here I have my new Hyper-B Ubuntu machine. So again, the process is the same. Here is the application already running. So repeating, you need to have the .NET runtime running. Then you can run these two commands, which are the, this one is the one that, um, that install the tools. And this one, you need to run it if your application is new, but if you already have run it in another OS, you already have it, so not the not problem. So after that, again, the same things. You need to have uh, Node.js running and MTM running, and that's it. So after that, you do the same. <coughs> you come here and basically you go to the directory, you open the console, Let's see, open terminal, and I think I have, okay, this is the command, you see, it's the same, electronized build, target, and in this case it's Linux. So let's see where the application is, it's in bin, desktop, and here, this is the Linux container, so let's run it. Okay, so here we have the application running. As you can see, it's again the same idea. It's a native window and it's a native executable file. And let's try to log in. And there you go. Working self contained, everything is in there. The framework, everything. I mean, in this case, I have the framework in the machines that I'm using because I'm compiling there. But once you compile and you have the executable, you don't need anything else in that machine. It's self-contained. So that's it for this video. I think like I will make an article actually about this. So you can have the commands per OS because you have to change a little bit between OS. And that's it. As you can see, Subblazor is a great uh, choice, I would say, if you want to run in multiple OS. First is web. I mean, it runs perfectly on web. And then if you really need to compile desktop applications, you can do this. And let me show you something that I don't know if I mentioned at the beginning. I think I didn't. This might sound like a crazy idea to compile a web application for desktop. But it's not that crazy. See the people who is doing it. Visual Studio Code, Facebook Messenger, Twitch, Slack, InVision. So it's not that crazy after all. Um, Maybe I will continue the series of this video because I think I just did the minimum that you can do to run it. 
but I think there should be other stuff that might be interesting. Okay guys, so that was everything for this video, so thank you and see you in the next video.